five minutes after nine o'clock, it's time for Winging It. This is the program every Friday on WOCA that is brought to you by Brad Bursman and Josh Verdunk. They're your hosts, and they'll answer your questions about flying. They're both from the Ocala Aviation Flight School. They'll tell you what it takes to be a pilot and and uh, how much they enjoy the process. The number to call in this morning is 622-9622. That's the WOCA Climate Control Source Hotline, 622-9622. Good morning, Greg. Good morning, Josh. Good, Good morning. morning. Do you enjoy the process, Brad? Oh, I enjoy the process, but I don't know if Larry, yeah, I don't think he believes it because the way he laughed, it's kind of a, but like he wasn't too sure. <laughs> no, I wasn't too sure what I was he, saying. He thought it was the way he said it. I don't think he process. knew what he was saying. Oh, he just kind of was on the... Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, do you, so you don't enjoy the process? Well, it depends on which process you're talking I don't know, about. I don't know. There's a lot of process. <laughs> There's, There's a lot, lot of process. That's why I left, because that made no sense at all. It just, it just came out of me, and I thought, well, I can't rewind it. There it is. Kept saying it. Okay. There it is. And now we're reliving it over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> but the process of learning anything is, is uh, an experience. It's probably something to look back on once you've done it. How, when, how long ago did you get your licenses? I got my the first one. Two thousand. Well, you, you had to move, move out of the way for the pterodactyls, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, yes, they had the right of way. Oh, okay. Yes, Josh, I got my private in two thousand and five. I got my private in. <laughs> Go ahead. Two thousand and three. Two thousand and ten. Nine. Nine. Okay. Nine. I think it was nine. Two thousand nine. But I'm, I mean, that's relatively recently from, in both of your cases, so that's got to be exciting. The process of getting there must have been awesome. It, it's one of those. There are certain events when you do like that private that you don't forget, like the first solo. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah. I mean, yeah. nobody forgets their first solo. Wouldn't you agree? I you may want to forget it. I, I remember mine. Um, it was on a little grass field. My instructor went and sat under a tree. Do you remember the feeling when you when you first got off the ground? That's the thing. I don't remember that feeling. You don't remember that? I remember. You don't. We, we went and I did the, the solo and I landed and he, said, he hopped back in the airplane and said, okay. That's, that's all it was. Very non-eventful, huh? It to, sucked. To the, uh... Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Dan just threw water at us <laughs> from outside and hit the window because you're just complaining. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was a great one there, Josh. <laughs> I didn't explain. So it was so uneventful, you don't even really remember the feeling? I don't really. It was very You uneventful. were just so ready and so there that... I don't know. I guess. I don't even... I thought it because he just didn't make a big deal out of it. He didn't make a big deal out of it at yeah, all. I, just, I remember because Ron was my trainer, and so he got to the plane I took off. I'm like, oh, well, I guess now I don't have a choice. I'm, I'm in the air now. I remember that feeling of there's no turning back. Once you're in the air... And that's kind of one of the ones we teach the students when they're going on flying solo, or going on cross countries, that taking off is an option, but landing isn't. Yeah, right. So yeah. once you're in the air, you're kind of you're there. We well, don't really have to teach them that. They yeah, kind of yeah. you know realize that on their own. What what's this? New water, new water. Right. Dan is, it, is it, bringing us new water. Is this from the lake? <laughs> you get it from the Fresh pond. From the lake. Let's, we're sampling water here. In, in case you didn't know, we're an aviation show and a water sampling show. <laughs> have you have you had any Much better. students? Much better. Wow. Have you had any students that literally knew how to fly but never really took formal lessons, like they learned from their dad or something like that, and, and so they came to the school mostly for the for the formal parts to think you get a real license. Well, yeah. I mean, you've had people that have relatives that do fly. Oh, we have a call. <laughs> yeah. I didn't mean to stop you short. I just, I, you could have finished. All right, good morning. You're on the air. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Uh, during this morning, uh, uh, prior, you know, this previous uh, radio program, I brought up a problem with the, uh, the president's uh, executive orders, and one of them is to uh, confiscate or take control of all aircraft including commercial aircraft. My question to you is, did you ever receive any kind of uh, no, uh, federal government notifications of the possibility of your aircraft being used for whatever purpose, emergencies or whatever, by the government? And I'm really just very wondering, you know, very curious about that. Okay. I'll hang up and listen for your, your comments. Thank okay. you. Okay. No, I've never heard of that before. Um, now, from what I'm saying, like if it was like a, an emergency or something, they would take control of your aircraft? Is that what he's talking Appreciate about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Just like, a, I guess like a police officer taking your car and saying, I, I need it. 
Well, I mean, I guess if the president walked up to me and said, I need your aircraft, I'd be like, okay. I, I mean, don't know why the president would I, need our little 172. Yeah, but, but it's, I don't know. I've never heard of it, but I guess it's possible. I would love to see 172 with munitions hanging off the wings. That would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> you have another phone call. Good morning. You're on the air. I remember my first solo. I don't know how anyone could forget. I think I remember every flight I took back then. But I remember it's the plane lifting off, and I, I'm thinking that it really came off faster. I, I noticed the weight difference. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. and, and I remember uh, circling on top and radioing down saying, boy, it's lonely on top. <laughs> and, and I remember knowing it was coming, so I wore the right shirt. So when they cut it off, you guys, do you still do that? Is that a lost tradition where you cut off the shirt tails? Oh, no, we still do that. Oh, good, because for a while they weren't doing it. And, you know, to be able to hang that on the wall or put it in a frame or something is pretty awesome. And I remember coming home from the airport and having being passed by cars that were doing way over the speed limit and thinking, hey, I can do that any time. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You know? Oh, yes. And, what, and when people would ask me um, how fast my motorcycle would go, I always said, I don't trust anything that goes more than 70 and stays on the ground. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. So. I like that. Well, All very right. good. Well, thank you for sharing that. Okay. Have a great one. You too. Yeah, Bye. We have a, a hall of solo yes, shirts. Yes, we have what is called the Hall of Solos. Really? And because what we do is when we call the back of somebody's shirt, we actually keep the part that we cut off. We write their name, the date. I draw a picture. He he draws a well a loosely named picture, uh-huh. kind of like They're a pretty good. You gotta admit, I'm an artist. Okay, yes, he's an artist. Okay, sure. <laughs> um, but then we hang up. We have a hallway that we hang them all up on, and it's it's really neat. Well, we it's you staple them to the wall. Yes. <laughs> good morning. You're on the air. Hang shirts. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Okay. So you're going to solo. You, you're solo unless you have a little minor crash on the uh, end of the flight. Would you have to start school over again? Well, <laughs> um, you don't have to start school over again. I mean, you you hope for not having any kind of minor crash during a solo. But yeah. no, you wouldn't start over. You would just have to have more training okay. and figure out why it happened. Would would you get like an F on the report card then, or something like that, or uh? no? I mean, it would and and it would really depend on what happened. Yeah. Um, you know, you you have situations that things go wrong, or you have it where you. You know, balloon and yeah. It, it, there's all different kinds of things. There's no grading system on it. It's just you need more training to, in, to so that you're safe. When you're solo, do you have like an instructor that you have to stay in with visual sight so he can watch what you're doing and, and do certain procedures? Well, on your first solo, I mean, the instructor's going to watch you. I promise you that. They sit outside and watch you the whole time. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, when you go for uh, solo flights after that, you know, you go into the practice area, you go on cross country, so there's not really any way they can watch you. Not they not have to they trust their training. To, yeah, not if they fly next to another. Airport. Or yeah, no, 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 yeah. no. No, they have yeah. to trust their training that they did. They did right by you. Yeah. See, uh, on a on a newer aircraft now, uh, the st- steering are those just steering wheels, or do they still have the stick? They have both. It depends on uh, what kind of plane you have. Some have the stick, some have the yoke. Just the regular, what kind of looks like a steering wheel. Would you prefer one over the other? Um, I've flown them both. I prefer the well, the yoke, the steering wheel type. Yeah, personally, but yeah. you know, people are different because with the the stick, sometimes they have it on the arm, like on the armrest, like on the Cirrus, that's on the armrest. Yeah. Um, the the Skycatcher has it right in the middle, and so does the CTLS. So it really kind of depends on what you like. Yeah. Now with with, with smaller aircraft, like I, I know, like some have like uh, uh, three three landing wheels with one on the nose, and some don't. Uh, do you have to have like a special license for each one of those? Would you like to talk about the difference between the tricycle and yes, the, the tricycle gear planes are the ones that have the the, the nose wheel, and then right. you have the what they call the um, tail dragger, or also called conventional. Okay. Conventional gear. That's the one where the the uh, wheels on the back. Yeah. And that you actually require are required to do a certain amount of. Well, actually, you just need to be found pr- proficient with an instructor, yeah. and he has to sign your logbook that you can fly the conventional or ta- tail dragger airplane. Yeah, yeah. Um, personally, I, I did a lot of, of flying in the tail draggers during my training, yeah. and they're much cooler and much more manly. And it, it's probably a little more easier mm-hmm. uh, to land than the try. The tri- um, they're actually harder to land really? when the when the the wheels in the back, and the reason being is not to get too technical, but when you're co- technical, I'll get technical. When coming into land, 
with a tricycle gear when the nose is in the front, the center of gravity for the airplane is located between the main gear and the nose gear. Okay. So if you land a little bit sideways on the runway, yeah. it's going to pretty much straighten itself out. Oh, okay. Now, when the, the wheels in, on the tail, when you land, the, uh, the center of gravity for the airplane is actually located behind the main gear. Okay. And what that happens, what hap can happen is if you land a little bit sideways and you hit the brakes, that uh, tail is oh. going to want to try to overtake the nose, and you can w do what they call a ground loop, where the, oh. the airplane will spin around, and oh. once it's started, it's, it's very difficult or even impossible to stop. Lots yeah. of times, one wing will come down and strike the ground and stuff like that. So. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Okay, uh, good program, and thank you for your answer. Thank you. Bye, no. Bye. All right, if you would like to call, uh, the phone number here is the WOCA Climate Control Source Hotline, 622-9622. Well, Josh has a huge announcement to make, very, very large announcement. He was, is by all accounts, wrong. Wait, I thought this was my announcement. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Josh, announce how you were wrong and how all right. wonderful you felt when you got back to the office. I made a comment last week uh, that I think it was something to the effect of the space shuttle doesn't Produce a lot of lift. No, you said it does not produce lift. Go ahead. All right, whatever. You know, I said the the <laughs> space shuttle is not necessarily aer aerodynamic and all this kind of stuff. Right, right. And when I got back to the flight school on Friday, I was crucified for this. <laughs> oh no! Oh, yeah, no. because apparently, I earlier in the program, I also someone asked a question about a blimp, and I said, you know, I'm not 100 percent sure because I don't fly blimps. And so I, I didn't feel comfortable making a, a, a comment on the blimps. Right, right. But apparently I did feel comfortable making a comment on the space shuttle. So Although he does actually fly the space I shuttle. I have never flown a space shuttle. Yes. <laughs> so I apologize to our, all our listeners. I was wrong. Uh-huh. It does uh, produce lift. Only time I'm going to say that. And how did how did Ron explain to you that it can produce lift? Why do you know it can produce lift? I'm not going to go into all no, that. No, no, we we have a caller. How do you know it can we produce have, lift? We have a caller. Because it can turn. and. Because so. it can turn. It wouldn't be able to turn if it didn't produce lift. But I, but I think the question was, does it produce lift while it's on the back of the 747? Yeah, that was the original question. Right. And then it went into a big, long tangent. But what was the answer to that question? Does it produce lift when it's it, yeah, there? Yeah, it would. Oh, it still would. But yeah. marginal, probably. Okay. So Maybe. We don't know. So the brick thing didn't apply to that one. You know what? On Space Cowboys, the movie, they said it's like a brick, so that's... You know <laughs> All right, we do have a phone call. Good morning. <laughs> You're on the air with Brad and Josh. Uh, listen, uh, this is what I was going to try to find. Is there a limitation on how long you'd be before they solo? For instance, uh, I took three days to solo, but my gosh, I put in the morning flight, in the afternoon, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the morning. I just wanted to limit uh, on solo. There is no limit on time or hours to solo. Uh, they do really, though, now they push hours. Um, they, the FA is really pushed to making sure that the student has more hours, that they're more ready for it. Um, I, before, um, you know, like with you, like you said it would only take you three days, but you had a lot of training in between that. Well, back really a few years ago, the big push was it was very cool to solo in very few hours. Like, you had people soloing in four and five hours. Well, they've kind of realized that doesn't really do you any good because you're still doing all the training anyway. And so they've kind of pushed to do more training, to do more maneuvers, so that when you do your first solo, you're actually ready for it. Yeah. Well, I, I put in about six hours in three days, so mm -hmm. I, I just wondered if there's a limit time on uh, I'll tell you another thing. Cross country. Remember how the, the pilot would go cross country with you, and we go day we go over to Daytona and then St. Augustine and back across the forest. Uh huh. And, and you and did you ever have mentioned much about cross countries with these flights? Uh, you you might tell me something about that. Another thing, <laughs> when we got back, a guy named Kenny Richards. He was my instructor. We got back to Silver Springs. We grabbed. The, he wondered if it was vibrating. So when we got back. We found that all it was a club. All the bolts in the in the propeller were loose. <laughs> oh, that's not good. <laughs> I just thought I'd mention that. Anyway, <laughs> I soloed in three days. I just wondered if there's a limit time now. Yeah. Compared to then. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you'll find a lot of times. Uh, People were soloing in as few as seven hours. Nowadays, I find that a lot of my students are soloing around uh, 
between 18 to 25 hours, depending on, because we have a, actually a whole list of things we have to go through. And it is the hardest decision to make as an dis- instructor. When do I hop out of this airplane with this new pilot yeah, right. and let them go off in a $350,000 airplane yeah, right, while I sit right. here on the ground with, with the radio, you know. Mm. So we definitely watch that for that first solo very closely. Yes. Good morning. You're on the air. Uh, good morning, my friends. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing okay. Good. What's the What's the difference of the um, the biplane uh, weight because uh, the weight factor uh, will probably uh, change um, like um, how you control the plane uh, uh, in the air. The weight difference? Well, I mean, I've never flown a biplane, um, but I know that I have seen ones being worked on, and the wings are a lot lighter. They're made of a, um, they're like hollow, well, they're all wings are hollow, but... Um, good one there. Oh, yes, thank you. I was good. Well, that, they don't have the they don't have the fuel in them. Yep. A lot of biplanes are also uh, cloth covered. Cloth, and they have the wood. Oh, yeah. Light wood. Yep. Yeah. What's the, di- what's the difference with, um, like, um, the wings? I know the wings are made out of a certain um, uh, uh, made out of um, aluminum or uh, whatever and they have to keep on uh, flat and you have to um, keep on doing uh, everything uh, to keep it flat yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I don't know that. I don't really know anything about biplanes. Um, Josh, do you? No? Yeah, I, I really don't know that much about them. It would be something definitely to look into, but it's not something that I've ever been trained in or really looked into. All right, well, thank you for the call. The phone number is 622-9622 if you want to be on the air with Josh and Brad. We're talking about flying and airplanes and biplanes and, uh, and how yes. heavy they are. Yes, now we need to look into some biplane stuff. Yeah. You have announcements. I do have announcements. You're going to let me make announcements? Go for it. Oh, I had well, big, you, I had a, I had a bombshell. Well, aren't you going to do this one, though? Oh, yeah, that one's Okay, fine. I'm going to do the top one. No, you can do both. And just give me credit for that one. Oh, okay. All right. And don't forget the last one. <laughs> okay. We <laughs> we uh, want to congratulate a couple of students. We had two people take tech rides last Friday. Uh, for their multi-engine, we had Juan Pablo. Juan Pablo. Juan Pablo from <laughs> Ecuador. He came in just for a couple of days, got his multi-engine. And then we had Kevin David, who we've made many announcements for Kevin David because he's done his private, his, instrument, his commercial, and now his multi-engine with us. And he's working on his CFI next. Which he needs to hurry up and get done. Yes. Who's, whose student is he, by the way? Well, aside from the multi, well, he is, Kevin David is your student. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. So he is... Um, but, yeah, so that was great job to Juan Pablo and to Kevin David for getting their Maltese last week. And then we do have two people taking check rides today. Uh, one is... What? Oh, yeah, two. Yes, Angie... Reddy, who is Josh's student again, uh-huh, uh-huh. and then we have I'm all proud. And yes, stuff. Juan Carlos, who is Martin's student. They're both taking their well, one's taking an instrument, one's taking a private, and then Josh is all excited because he has found out that he's going to be doing his multi Woo-hoo. training, and he plans on taking his check ride soon. So he wanted me to announce that he will be taking his check ride soon. He hasn't taken it. He hasn't really gotten ready for it, but he will be taking it soon. I'm going to study. So we're going to congratulate Josh before he takes it that he actually gets to take one. Yay! So, uh, well, it's, it's, it, it's been a long time coming because I, I haven't really been able to find the time or yeah. the money to do yeah, it. exactly. <laughs> so does everybody know what a check ride is? I don't know. Am I the only one who doesn't know? Okay. Yeah. Ch- yeah. yeah. Okay, a check ride. When, you, when you get your license or to get a license, you go through your training, you take a written test, and at the end you take a check ride. The check ride is it's kind of like when you go for a driving test. Okay. You know, you go to the DMV and they take... Same thing. You go with an FAA examiner. They'll far, first do a ground portion where they ask you questions, test your knowledge. Then they'll actually take you in the air, and you'll do a practical flying test. Okay. All right. And you have another Good phone question. call. It looks that. like. Um, Josh and Brad are your hosts. Come on. You're on the air with Josh and Brad. Are you there? Go on. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good question for Josh. Yes. Hey, when you take your multi-engine check ride and you pass, does that mean we're all coming over for steak? Oh, this is this is this is Scott Miller, isn't it? 
<laughs> yes, sir. Good morning. Oh. <laughs> I need to think about that. I guess. I guess so. We're gonna. We're gonna eat something. Probably pizza or something. No, he said steak. I don't have money for steak. I think. I think if he does steak, it may just be like a personal, maybe two or three people that are invited to his steak dinner. <laughs> so I think now that you brought it up, you're invited. How does that sound? <laughs> That sounds great. Uh, I listen every week and just want to tell you how much I appreciate the show. And you guys are some quality people to deal with over there. And, and you were talking about first solos this morning. And I remember mine. It was very it was very rewarding to get up there. And, but I think most everybody has their first thought, boy, don't let me screw this up. Nobody's in here to help me. Yeah, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you. We appreciate the, the compliment. He's and a loyal listener. He is. He is a great student and loyal <laughs> listener. He has gone through his private instrument, commercial, yep, and multi. No, nope. no, he didn't do multi yet. When are you coming to your multi, Scott? I'm working on that right now. <laughs> pretty busy with going back and forth to the Bahamas. Oh, that must be rough on you. Uh, yes, sir. I'll take the hit. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, he has been a wonderful student. He has led many people to our door, at least for Discovery Flight, which is yes. good. We appreciate that. So, thank you, Scott. Okay, good talking to you. See you soon. All righty, sir. Yeah, we'll make sure we invite him for the for your multi check ride. I just I just realized that that yes, and of course he had to bring it up too. That's great. Oh. Are you gonna what? buy? Are you gonna stay buy steaks that are in the shape of hot dogs? Yes. Yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> or in the shape of hamburgers. Yes. Hey, they got steak burgers. You can say it's steak. It is the same product. You mean it's both cow? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you have another phone call. Good morning. You're on the air with Fred and Josh. Hey, uh, Larry. Hey, Fred. Hey, uh, uh, you're dealing with the uh, airport stuff. Uh, fine. Well, what about the uh, people that uh, uh, the son of a flying farmer? And one of the maneuvers, because of the length of the airstrip, had to learn side slipping. Have you, uh, do you teach that now? Is that a regular part of your courses or not? Side slipping? Yep. Side slipping, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. yeah, so the side slip is used to, um, there's two types of slips that we do, a forward slip and a side slip. A side slip is used to compensate for a crosswind on landing. Um, and then the forward slip is, is used to... Uh, lose a lot of altitude without gaining a whole lot of airspeed. And we do teach both still. Uh, well, uh, we use, uh, use side slip to, to uh, make the plane go down like it was on an elevator. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. And because of the, you know, the, the, the airstrip is very short, and so uh, we've got to be able to just sort of get over the fence to be on the ground. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, they still teach that. Yeah, and that was the reason we decided. And now, if you ever run into uh, uh, dust devils and uh, wind shear. Dust devils and wind shear? You ever run into them? <laughs> no. Dust devils, no. Wind shear, yes, quite a bit. Uh, but um, uh, not, not really dust devils, not around here. Well, uh, anyway, uh, I had uh, trouble with wind shear, with the dust devils on takeoff one time. The plane ended up crossways of the, of the airstrip. And, Oops. And, it, 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 and then after the, I got over it, uh, somebody told me well, what had happened. The dust devil had, uh, had uh, swirled over, the, over my tail, so I'd lost all, all control of the <laughs> elevators and rudder. That's never good. And it, no. and it turned me sideways with the airship. <laughs> oh, wow. And I got stopped about six foot from the barbed wire fence. <laughs> <laughs> So that's a, that's one thing. And winds here, I've had, I've had that where they're caught about 50 feet off the ground coming in for a landing and hit a wind shear. And was just lucky that they had enough power to, to uh, keep from going, ending up on the fence. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, well, very yeah. cool. All right, thank All right. you. Thanks for the call. Thank you. All right, I have been given a piece of paper with an official WOCA letterhead on it. We're almost out of time. Uh -huh. That says on it, Review Discovery Flight and Scholarships. Go, Brad. Okay. <laughs> review Discovery Flights. Discovery Flights. I guess we're going to review what that is. Discovery Flight is when you come out and Josh will take you on the plane, show you what it is. You get in, you help taxi, you help take off. Once you're in the air, you have to get, take the controls, fly the plane. We fly over your house, fly over water, do whatever. It's a great way for people to, you know, either see if they like to fly or even just for gifts. We have a lot of people that give it to people um, for birthdays, Christmas, anniversaries, whatever. So... 
It's a real good thing. It's $99. A lot of fun. Sometimes we give them away. I don't have one to give away today, but maybe next week we will. Yeah. Give us a call at... 861-7484. And we're, the scholarship, we still are attempting to give away money. $4,000. $4,000 to a 17 to 25-year-old person that wants to learn to fly, get their private pilot's license. It is a great thing. It's a great scholarship. Somebody needs to take the money. Um, I know I had a young gentleman in here that had talked to me and he never called me, but then I saw on Facebook that he... Um, had a, was holding a baby, so maybe he had a baby, and that's why he didn't call me. Oh, wow. I'm thinking that may be what it was. Oh. That's a pretty good excuse. That's a, I hadn't heard of that before. So, all yeah. right, yes. Um. So that's it, and you can call me at three five two eight six one seven four eight four, or go to ocalaaviation.com. Dot com. <laughs> that was beautiful. All right, wave goodbye. You got a lot of people watching you. I oh, see, do we? I see, yeah, see you on there. Oh, that's good. Got a big wow. numbers, big numbers today. Big number six. Uh, all right, we'll, we'll uh, <laughs> take a little break. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Josh. And call us if you need any of their information repeated. We'll be right back. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Life jackets save lives. Where in Florida, today partly sunny with a shower or thunderstorm spreading from the coast early to inland by this afternoon, the high 85 to 89. Tonight, partly cloudy with a thunderstorm early, the low 69 to 72. Then a shower or thunderstorm around tomorrow. It will not be a washout because we can see some sunshine as well, the high 86 to 89. A stray thunderstorm in the afternoon on Sunday, otherwise partly sunny, the high 86 to 89. From the Florida.